Hi, my name's Arrow. Um, welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, I, was, I just wanted to make a quick video today, a little bit different than my usual stuff, about the concept of anti-fragility, which is something I encountered by reading Nassim Taleb's Inserto series, which includes books like Fooled by Randomness, Anti-Fragile, Black Swan. They're well worth a read, the entire series. Fully recommend it. But this is particularly from the book Anti-Fragile, which was my favorite book in the series. So imagine that there are things and there are stressors. And things experience stressors and they respond to stressors. And stressors is any kind of stimulus that is a little bit chaotic, a little bit, you know, in principle it should be a harmful stimulus. So, let's take an example of a stressor, like a moderate physical force. And we'll take three things as examples. A beautiful wine glass, my radius, which is a bone in the forearm here, and the, the, the desk I use, made of wood, okay? So, the wine glass will break in response to a moderate physical force, so it is fragile. The desk will be no worse off and no better off after a moderate physical force. It is robust. My radius will actually overcompensate and increase in bone density. It is anti-fragile. So, that which is fragile is worse off after a particular stressor. That which is robust is no better nor worse off after a stressor. And that which is anti-fragile is actually better off after the stress. So, there, what, what are some examples of anti-fragile things? Because that is, the most, that is the most interesting category. Trees grow stronger in response to wind. Bone density, when you have proper nutrition and proper, um, proper recovery, bone density increases with exercise, at least some forms of exercise. My, my budget becomes a bit tighter when I run out of money. Those three things are better off after a principally harmful stimulus. They are anti-fragile. And if we think of something that is anti-fragile, like my radius, its anti-fragility is still contingent on the proper type of stressor. So, for example, we, there, we can think of stressors which would be completely trivial to it. We can think of stressors which could cause an anti-fragile response, and we can think of stressors which would actually make the bone worse off. So something trivial like opening the door, such a small force that it doesn't ha cause anything to my bone really. Okay, lifting weights at the gym probably causes some micro trauma, and then the osteoblasts and osteoclasts heal it, making it a bit stronger. And we can also think of a stimulus which is so strong that it breaks my bone, like a crush injury, or maybe if I fall off a bike. Clearly, that damages the structural integrity of my bone, and my bone is worse off. Therefore, it is fragile to it. And I wrote a blog post about this, and in the blog post I call these three types of stimuli the trivial stimulus, the moderate stimulus, and the catastrophic stimulus. So the trivial stimulus is something to which a thing is robust. A Moderate stimulus is something to which a thing is anti-fragile. And um, a catastrophic sim stimulus is something to which a thing is fragile. So the particularities of the thing and the stressor and the interactions between them determines whether something is anti-fragile, fragile or robust. And the, the, the corollary of this is that it may be more useful, in general, to think of things in terms of robust 
fragile, anti-fragile, than like good or bad, weak, strong. Because when you categorize things in these categories, you start to be able to notice what things in your life you should subject to stresses. Okay? And your perspective on stresses might change. So the point is you should identify things in your life which are anti-fragile and the stresses, the moderate stresses to which they are anti-fragile, against which they, in response to which they demonstrate an anti-fragile sort of overcompensation and subject them to those stresses and just allow it, okay? And, but you should still ensure that they don't encounter catastrophic stresses. So in doing exercise, you need to make sure you don't break your bones, you don't break, break your ligaments, you don't tear your muscles. That's completely necessary because a catastrophic stimulus is sort of like, it's usually have some, a, a stimulus that is stronger in its intensity than the anti-fragile stimulus or, or the moderate stimulus. And those are to be avoided. But then, they're just, they're, then there's the trivial stimuli, the things that are small and they don't have an impact on the system. You can just ignore those. So that's the, that's the paradigm. And that's what I got from reading Anti-Fragile. And the, uh, like I said, it's, a, it's a well worth a read. Um, I'll put a link in the description to the, the publisher's website. It's, it's fantastic. I'll also link the companion blog post that I wrote, which goes to basically the same thing. But yeah, um, I hope you wat enjoyed watching this video. Um, this is this, the whole idea of anti-fragility is something that changed the way I see lots of things in life. So I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. See you again soon. Bye bye.